Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Derek Mitchell and in today's quick tip, I want to show you how you can grab nearly any icon just like this and use it in your next design project or in my case, how I'm using it right now. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Derek Mitchell. And in today's video, I wanna show you a really cool quick tip about icons. So just like this guy right here, I wanna show you how you can grab the icon from any file or any application on your computer. This is super handy for tutorials like what I'm doing where I show icons, but also you can use this to rename and put new images on your hard drives on your desktop. All right, so let's take a look at this. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually jump into my applications window and I'm gonna scroll down to this color uh, app that I use all the time called SIP. And so I wanna grab the icon for a video that I'm making right now. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna hit Command I or right click and go to Get Info. And then it's gonna open up the window for this application. And what I can do now is click up here in the top left icon and you'll see it highlights it. And I'm gonna click Command C to copy that image. Now what I can do is just open up Photoshop and I'm gonna hit Command N to make a new document or click Create New. And you'll notice it has this clipboard size. So when I copied that icon, it saw that it was 1024 by 1024 at 144 pixels per inch. So it already has a recommended file size for me, so I'll just click Create. With that open, I'm gonna hit Command V to paste, and now the icon comes right into that file. And you'll notice if we look over here in our Layers panel, if I turn off the background, it brings it in as a transparent file. So let's do that again. I'm gonna jump over into uh, Finder again. Let's go back up to Photoshop because I know I'm gonna need that icon here in just a second for the beginning of this video because this is how I'm going to use it in this video. I'm gonna click on the Photoshop app. Now you'll notice you've got the Photoshop folder. Don't click on here. You wanna click within that and come to the actual .app app file. I'll hit Command I to open up my info. We'll click over here on the icon, Command C to copy, back into Photoshop, Command N for a new document. We'll use that clipboard size, we'll paste it, we'll turn off the background, and you'll notice it's really, really subtle, but it brings in the drop shadow as well. So really handy way to grab icons to use it. So the way that I would export this now is just grab the single layer, and I'm gonna change the name to, uh, let's just call it Photoshop icon and I'll right click and I'll click export, quick export as PNG. So now because I gave the layer a name, it's going to name that. And for now, I'll just throw it right on my desktop and we'll save it. I'll come back over to this SIP icon. So SIP, you guys, if you missed it, it's the video that I released um, earlier. It's, I think it's one of the last videos I released talking about how I use different color tools. So I'm gonna use this one as well. Let's just go ahead and give it a new name. Let's call it SIP icon right click, we'll quick export. And let's throw this one actually where it belongs. So this is my YouTube, let's go to the color samples video, I'll throw it in my footage file, and we'll hit save. All right, so now what I wanna do is actually bring that icon into my tutorial and how I animate these in. So what I'm gonna do is jump over into Finder, let's go back to my YouTube folder, go ahead and close this window grab my color samples, we'll go to the footage, and it is the SIP icon. All right, so there it is. So now what I'm gonna do is come back over to my project here, and let's go ahead and grab that, and we're just gonna drag it right into the footage file here. There's the SIP icon, and now I can drag this right into my timeline for my tutorial. We'll click once on it. We'll go to my effect controls over here, and if you don't see this, go ahead and come up to Window. I'm, let's see, I'm in the uh, Editing pane. I'll go to Window, Workspaces. Let's reset this to Saved Layout so you and I are seeing the same thing. All right, so when I click on that, we wanna click up here on Effect Controls. So we can change the position. I don't have any keyframes toggled on, which is good. So let's just go ahead and scrub this into place here. And then the Scale, same thing. The stopwatch is not clicked, so it's not adding any keyframes. I'll put it about like that. All right, and then this is where this is about where I want it to finish up here when it's done animating. So we will go right about to here. Now I'll turn on my stopwatch for the position, which adds a keyframe. 
and then I'll scrub this back to the beginning. Click right here to add a new keyframe. And while I'm still in line with this new keyframe, if you were to move it off position a little bit and then do stuff, it'll automatically add a keyframe. So let's undo that. Let's step back using these arrows to step back to this keyframe at the beginning. And then I'm gonna scrub my Y coordinates down. Okay, so now if I hit spacebar, all right, now it's a very linear effect. So what we're gonna do is click and drag to highlight both of these, right click. We're gonna to go to our interpolation and go to ease in. It doesn't matter which one you choose. What we wanna do now is click this little twirl down and I can click these little handles to manipulate how it animates in. So it's gonna start slow and go real fast and then slow. So let's see that again. And this is how they whip in. So you can buy it. it's a there we go. All right, so that's how I use the icons in, in a, in a way like this with my videos to bring them up into the animation. All right, so another way that we can use this icon tip where we where we grab the icon from the info window is to create custom thumbnails for our hard drives. So this is my backup drive. It's got the Shepherd Fairy Obey Giant sticker on it, and it's a Western Digital Easy Store drive. So what I wanna do is create a custom icon for this, because on my desktop right now, it's just this standard uh, drive file. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and find an image that looks a lot like it, which, uh, this one does so I'm gonna right click and I'm going to open the image in a new tab we'll come down here and grab this I'm gonna right click copy the image we'll jump into Photoshop and I'm going to work right on top of this so the file size is the same it's gonna get a little bit pixelated when I scale it up but I'm not too worried about it right now we'll turn that off and now let's go ahead and grab the obey giant sticker so search for Shepherd fairy we've got this image here I'm gonna right click we're gonna open image in new tab I'm gonna right click, copy the image. We'll jump back into here, paste it in there, scale it up a little bit. All right, and then let's go ahead and clean it up just a touch. All right, so we got our sticker on here, scale it up, looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and remove this white background. So let's just select it real quick with the magic wand tool, make sure we're on the right layer. We'll delete that. The drop shadow's sitting in there. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. We'll add our own transparency drop shadow here. Uh, let's see, the best way to select this right now is probably with the new uh, quick selection tool. We'll just try and grab just the shadow here. How about this? We'll just grab the hard drive. There we go. Now I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, and the letter I to select the inverse. I'll get my eraser and we're just going to erase this shadow right here. All right, now let's draw a custom shadow right below it. Hit the letter B to get my brush tool. I'm gonna click, hold down shift, and then drag, and now I'll get a perfectly uh, straight shadow line here. Hit Command T, and let's just go ahead and, oops, let's just try that again. Whoa. There we go. All right, so we've got our own little shadow going on nothing too crazy I could obviously spend a lot of time on this but that's just enough to get the effect going here now what I'm gonna do let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit let's go ahead and shift click all of these we'll right click convert it to a smart object so it's just one layer then I'm gonna right click and quick export as PNG we'll throw this on the desktop we'll call it obey icon Right on my desktop, we'll hit save. All right, now let's jump over to my desktop. And here's that file that we just exported. Now here's a really important tip. So I've been going pretty fast with the shortcuts and stuff. This is what I want you to see. So I'm gonna go slow with it, but don't forget you can speed up or slow down with the controls below. What we're gonna do is double click to open this up in preview. If it opens up with something else by default, just right click, go down to, uh, where's it at? We wanna open with, and then the preview app, okay? So it should be in here. If you don't see it, check out these apps below, but we wanna open it with preview. All right, now that it's open, we are going to hit Command A to select everything. Where is that at? Just to make sure, let's see. Command A under edit, select all. Okay, so we've got everything selected. Now we want to copy everything. We'll hit Command C. All right, so we're in preview, we've got everything selected. Now we're gonna come over to my hard drive and hit Command-I, or go to right-click, uh, right-click, go to Get Info. 
we're going to click up here on the drive icon and hit command V to paste. And now it'll paste that image in there. So now we have a transparent hard drive image on my drive that looks just like the one sitting on my desk. I would show you, but it's plugged in and I don't want it to get corrupted. But anyway, it looks just like that. So that's how you can make your own icons for hard drives as well. All right, and the last tip for this video, you can also go to Google and just type in hard drive icons and you'll see a whole bunch of icons that have already been created. So just go find the image you want, do the same thing, save it to your desktop, copy it in preview, and then paste it into your hard drive icon file, info, icon, whatever. You get the point. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. Uh, it's a lot of fun to use and definitely very handy. You might be able to use it whether you're using a brochure or making a brochure or um, I don't know. There's lots of ways you can use it as icons. So get creative, have tons of fun, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and uh, tap that bell to get notified when new videos drop and we will see you in the next one.